For this video, I'll be working through question two of the level three 2018 electricity exam. Question two. KC or KC is using an electromagnet that has an inductance of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 1 Henry's, resistance of 2 ohms, um, connects it to a 12 volt DC battery with an internal resistance of 0.9 ohms. It's pretty small. Determine the, through the, determine the current through the electromagnet a, few, electromagnet a few minutes after the switch is closed. This assumes you know what these inductors do, um, or electromagnet, or whatever you want to call it. After a while, it just acts like a piece of wire. They only do stuff when the current's changing. They rely on changing magnetic fields, or work by changing magnetic fields. So, um, I'll just the quick and dirty way, because it's not, it's not a show question. You can just calculate a V equals IR. You should really be using like the EMF and all that other stuff, but ah, I is equals the current is equal to the, uh, what are we going to do, EMF, EMF over uh, total, which is just going to give me 12 divided by, well not, 2 plus that because I'm in series, 2, 0, 9, which is going to give me 5.74 amps. I think if you just find it by hook or crook, um, you get there. Right. What do we got? Casey, Casey now opens a switch and a large spark jumps across current terminals of the switch. Explain how the coil can produce such high voltage when the switch is open. So I'll just pause this, write the answer, and then discuss. So I've said when the switch is open, this creates a large um, change in current. I've just put delta I, coupled with the fact that the resistance of the circuit is extremely large. Um, the time constant. I see the resistance is extremely large. Really, it's infinite. Um, but the resistance is just the resistance of the air that the air poses. Um, so uh, not quite infinite, just really, really large. Um, the time constant decreases because the time constant is just the inductance divided by the resistance. Combined, this induces a large voltage across the inductor as the EMF across the inductor. inductor. Um, pretty sure there's a negative sign in there is equal to the uh, inductance times the change in current over change in time. Change in current is going real, real big. Change in time is getting real, real small. Thus, with a high enough voltage, air will conduct and a spark will result. Um, I often tell my students that anything will conduct if you have, an al if you have a large enough voltage. There are some things that's not entirely true for, um, but for air, that is certainly the case. I think it's about 3 million volts per metre, so half a metre, you're dealing with 1.5 million volts, you know, plus or minus a couple hundred thousand volts here and there, depending on different... I don't know, temperatures or, I don't think temperature comes into it, it's more like moisture, constant, moisture content. Anyway, to prevent damaging sparks, um, Casey or Casey places a 20 ohm resistor in parallel with the electromagnet. Um, at one point, shortly after the switch is closed, a rising current drawn from the battery has reached 2 amps. A back EMF of 9 volts has been induced across the inductor. Show that the current through the electromagnet at this time is 1.4 one amps. Man, this is a doozy of a question. Mostly because it shows, it means you have to like put a whole lot of stuff down to show that you know what you're doing. Um, and even if you do know what you're doing, you haven't put that down, you're going to run into problems. So, first and foremost, we shall start labeling stuff. Switches close. So we're going to close the switch in our little diagram so it doesn't throw us off. We're also going to start putting in some, that's the positive side of the battery. Um, and 2 amps, so this is 2 amps, I don't know why I put that extra zero there. Um, this has a back EMF, this inductor, has a back EMF of 9 volts, so we'll just pretend it's a battery, because it'll make our life kind of easy, 9 volts, and it's been induced across the inductor, show that the current through the electromagnet at this time is 0 point blah 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 blah. Right, so this will be Kirchhoff's law of some description, so Kirchhoff's law states that the sum of the currents um, in a node should add to zero. Now, basically, the current, you can't, it's a conservation of charge and conservation of energy. So, I must have put, um, oh, how can I do this neatly? Sum. Ooh, is this a neat Greek sigma? Yeah, that is, like that. Um, of the voltages in a closed loop is equal to zero. Um, in other words, I'm going to call this, this is V battery. Um, v bat. Yeah, uh, and then what else we got? VBAT, um, oh, what else are we going to do? Minus, are we going minus? Oh, no, we should. 
I'm going to go plus because I know. I know because if, if I've said the current's going this way, I'm going down the potential difference of the uh, of the battery. So it's going to be plus. I'm just going to V bat. Oh, no, wait. V or oh, resistance. Resistor. Oh, that's terrible. Um, and I'm going to do, this is my close. So this is my loop. This is going to be my loop. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going with the flow of the current, so it means I'm losing potential. You're going down the river, you're losing potential energy. Um, along here, I know for a fact, this is 12 volts, so it's going to overpower this, so the current's going to be going that way. It's a given. Um, so the current's going to be going this way. We'll call this I1, and this current will be 1.41, but we're going to show that soon. So we're going to be going down that potential difference, so we're going to go... Uh, plus V, what are we going to call this? Um, what's that going to be called? That should be minus because I'm losing that potential, and this should be minus as well. There we go because I'm losing that potential, I'm going down the river with the flow of the current. Um, so it's going to be minus uh, as well as V, two ohms. I don't even know why I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go minus, um, call this EMF, EMF uh, inductor. Oh, it's terrible. It's, I don't know. I should have labeled everything as I went, but originally I didn't even do this. So now to the math. 12 volts, easy peasy, minus, because I'm losing that potential. So uh so I'll, I'll explain the way you go about it. If you're going up the battery, you can essentially think, you're a little electron, you're going up some stairs, you're gaining potential energy. So here we have a positive 12. Now we're an electron, we're, and we've set the current direction, we know the current direction. Um, it's pretty obvious, 2 amps, but you normally set it. Um, and this is, what is this? this is technically called mesh analysis. Um, so we're going to go with the flow of the current, so it means I'm going to be minus... 2 amps times 0 0.09 um, and now I'm going to go minus I1 because that's that current flowing through there 2 amps um, minus 9 equals 0 in other words a little bit of rearranging uh, or no, minus I1 times 2 equals Minus 2.82, um, in other words, minus I1 is equal to minus 2.82 divided by 2 equals 1.41 1 .1 amps. Um, right, so I'll just write this thus current through, um, let's put EMAG, electromagnet is 1.41 amps. It would be a whole lot easier if they just hadn't have given us that. Um, instead of a show question, it would have just been a do question because um, we wouldn't have had to do half the work, but whatever. After many more minutes, the current through the coil is a steady state at 5.72 amps. The switch is now opened. Plot the graph of the... What are we doing? Plot the graph of the current versus the time for the electromagnet as the current falls to zero. Um, rightio, so what are we going to do? So we're going to find out the time constant of the circuit. How are we going to do that? We'll just write time constant is equal to the inductance divided by the resistance, and that is going to be equal to, what is the inductance? 4.5 times 10 to negative 1. Um, uh, 0 0.45 divided by... What do we got? 2 ohms, 20 ohms, 22. Um, they've opened the switch. Yeah, they've opened the switch. So it's just this single loop here. Um, and then it's going to give me, what is it going to give me? 0 0.0204 seconds. Oh, look at that. It works out so well. Um, yeah, they do this in the exams. They always make it so it ends up being on the axis, but whatever. Um, so we're going to plot out, we're going to figure out it starts. After many more minutes, the coil through the current is the current through the coil is at 5.2 amps. So initially, to begin with, the current through the coil is 5.2 amps. So we're going to write, we're going to find that 
point two, point four, point six. It's halfway between there, five point seven, which is halfway between point six and point eight. Um, right now the switch is opened, and after basically this is the first time constant, and we can just keep on doubling it. We'll just forget about the little small numbers. This is two tail. This is three tail. This is four tail, and this is five tail. Basically, here it's going to be zero, very close to zero. Use crosses as well. Um, don't use dots because then you can't see it. So first time constant, we're going to have. I'm just going to find out what the current is going to be at T1, and that is going to be 5.72 times 0.37 because it's going to drop by 63%, or it's going to be at 37% of the original value. Um, and that is going to be 2.11. So 2.11 is about here. Put across. And then you go T2 is just 2.11 times 0 0.37. And you can get where I'm going with this. What does that equal? That equals 0 0.78. What the heck is 0 0.78? There... Um, T3, I'm not even going to calculate it, I'm just going to write it down, 0 0.289, tau 4 is equal to 0 0.107, oh, I'm not even going to bother to do tau 5, so what is that? Um, so we got 0 0.28, that's tau 3, so 0 0.2, uh, it's about halfway in between, isn't it? Yep. I'm going to cross the fourth time constant's 0.1. Easy peasy. And the last one's down there somewhere. Right, so we're going to line these up, join them up. Bit of boom. It doesn't have to be super, super neat. It just has to be... Oh, that's pretty average. But whatever. Sweet, that's us. Um, explain how the presence of the 20 ohm resistor protects against high voltage sparks. That Casey witnessed E there somewhere earlier, so I'm going to pause it, write the answer, then discuss. So I've said 20 ohm resistor creates a low resistance circuit for the inductor to discharge through. Low resistance gives a high time constant um, because time constant is the inductance divided by the resistance. The change in current is now less, so the EMF across the inductor, um, which is equal to the change in current divided by the change in time, is decreased also.